Hello everyone from Curry Senior Vitality. My name is Josie and I'm from Community Tech Network. And today I'll be going over how to troubleshoot problems on your iPad. In the previous part of the lesson, I covered how to prevent issues, uh, but now we'll look at troubleshooting common problems. And troubleshooting really just means you have some kind of problem or issue and you systematically go through some steps on your own to try to figure out what's wrong and hopefully come to a solution without having to escalate it to anyone professional. There are, of course, times when professional help is needed, but a lot of these smaller common issues can be fixed on your own pretty easily. And many of the issues I'll go over today are related to not following the advice of part one of the video. So let's start with the issue of your iPad being slow. If you notice that the iPad is working slower than usual, maybe it's slow for apps to open or load, or websites aren't loading as quickly as you expect, uh, the first thing I would check is how many apps do I have open? Maybe my iPad has too many apps open and that's why it's slow. So just a reminder of how to do this, you'll double tap the home button, one, two, and that will show you a grid view of all of the apps that are open. And you can scroll through and see, in this example, I have quite a few apps that I've left open. So to close them, remember, you just need to swipe up on each app that you wanna close. So I'll close Fitbit, Facebook, and just go through and close all of the apps that you don't need open anymore. And you can check to make sure they're all closed by trying to double tap again. And it will sort of blink at you showing no apps are open. Something else that can really slow down your browsing on the internet is if you have too many tabs open in your browser. So let's open Safari which looks like a blue compass. And just take a look at how many tabs they have open and how to close them. So you can see tabs across the top here, but the easiest way to manage your tabs is to tap on this grid icon and see, in this case, I have seven tabs open. That's not too bad. You can certainly leave tabs open if you know you're going to want to look at that web page again soon. But the problem is if you get in the habit of always opening a new tab and never closing them, you can very quickly <laughs> accumulate a lot of open tabs, which can slow down Safari quite a bit. So I'll go ahead and close the tabs I don't need anymore by tapping the small X in the top right corner. And I recommend just trying to get into that habit that you, anytime you're done using Safari, just go ahead and close the tabs you won't need anymore. With troubleshooting, it's also important to just make sure that the iPad is up to date and backed up. We went through this in part one. These are a couple important steps for trying to prevent problems, but if a problem comes up, it's a good time for you to double check that that is happening correctly. So we'll just quickly review how to check for updates. You will find settings, which looks like a gear. Go to general software update and make sure you have automatic updates turned on. The next thing is backups. So to do that in settings, tap on your name tap on iCloud, iCloud backup, and just make sure it's on. If it's not, you would tap this green toggle button to turn it on. So off, on. And that means that it will automatically back up your apps and data when the iPad is charging, locked, and on Wi-Fi. So you can double check here too. When was the last time that my iPad was backed up. Another fairly common problem you can run into is the internet not working or issues with the internet. 
And you'll know this pretty quickly since most functions on the iPad require a Wi-Fi connection. So if you're not connected to Wi-Fi, you, you won't be able to do a lot of things. So let me show you an example of something that might happen. Let's say I try doing a search. We'll say pizza. I'm in Safari. Go. You'll get a message like this. Safari cannot open the page because your iPad is not connected to the internet. Same thing in other apps that require the internet. If I try to open YouTube, again, it says you're offline, check your connection. So let's show how to check that. One quick way you can double check whether Wi-Fi is turned on is to access your control center by swiping down and left. And the Wi-Fi symbol looks like this. It's this little fan or wedge shape. And since it's white right now, whitish gray, that tells me the Wi-Fi is turned off. And that can happen if you accidentally hit this button, it will turn off Wi-Fi. So I'll turn it back on. Blue is on. And if you're in the um, in the area of a Wi-Fi network you've connected to in the past, it will probably connect automatically, though it may take a minute. But let's take a look in settings. So here's the gear icon. And you want to look at Wi-Fi. If you're connected to a network, it will show it right here up on Tempe. You can also tap Wi-Fi and see, just make sure, okay, this is my network. There's a blue check mark showing I'm connected. Uh, but if you didn't see that, you would need to find your network name and tap on it and then enter the password. Now, let's say you are connected to a network, but your internet is just slow. One thing you can do is try turning off the Wi-Fi and turning it back on again and see if that makes a difference. Um, another thing is try to move closer to the modem in your, in your house. So sometimes if you're on the far end of the apartment or house, uh, your signal might be weaker. So try to move closer to the, the modem. And then if you've gone through these steps and it still didn't fix the problem, it may be an issue with your network. Um, internet service providers like Comcast or AT&T uh, do have temporary network shutoffs or issues. So that could always be a problem where it's nothing you can really handle on your own. It's just a problem with your internet service provider. What you can do in that situation is just try checking the Wi-Fi throughout the day to see if anything changes. You can also look at the modem itself and see if it looks normal. Sometimes if there's a problem, instead of a blue or green light, you'll see a red light. Uh, one thing you can also try is unplug the modem and leave it unplugged for a minute or two and then plug it back in. And when you do that, it'll take possibly a few minutes for it to reset. Um, but as you wait, the light should turn green and then try it again. If you have persistent problems with this, you might try connecting your iPad to a different Wi-Fi network and just see if that works okay. If you have consistent problems with many different networks, it's maybe not a, a network problem, but an issue with your iPad in which case you should reach out to Curry Senior Vitality staff to see if they can help at all with this. One other thing you can check is just make sure airplane mode is turned off, it's gray. Uh, if you turn that on by accident, it can interfere with, um, with Wi-Fi. Finally, I wanted to mention frequent notifications on the iPad. So this can happen if there's something, something wrong or slightly off with your iPad, you might start to get repeated notifications saying something like your iPad's not backed up or you need to update your iPad. So just remember to check your notifications and pay attention to them because this is the way that your iPad communicates with you that there's some sort of issue, something you need to do. 
So just a reminder to check your notifications from any page, swipe down from the top and take a look at what you've got. And I always like to keep the notifications clean. Just clear them out when you don't need them. Now, besides everything I've gone over so far, sometimes a good approach is if you're having a problem, if something seems to be glitching, uh, just close all of your apps and restart the iPad. So double tap, close everything if you have tabs open. And then to turn off the iPad, remember you would press and hold. And then slide your finger left to right to turn it off. And then you can turn it on right away and just see if that changed anything. Another great troubleshooting tool that I highly recommend is do some research online. If you have an issue and you went through these basic steps covered in this lesson and it still didn't fix the problem, try looking it up, obviously, if you have internet. So you can open Safari and whatever your problem is, just search it. So in this case, iPad slow, and you'll find some results. Um, how to fix a slow iPad. Why is my iPad so slow? And just uh, take a look. Um, oftentimes, if you're having an issue, probably other people had it in the past and they may have discovered um, an easy way to fix it. And there's definitely no need for you to spend a ton of time trying things and playing around when maybe you can just find the answer online. So another example might be, um, iPad not backed up notification. And again, you can find, oftentimes you can find answers directly from Apple. So give that a try if you get stuck before escalating it to somebody else. You can see, see if you can find the answer yourself. I hope this lesson was helpful. Um, we've gone over steps you can take to troubleshoot problems. Hopefully you never have any problems, but at least if you do, you know of some things you can do to try to fix it. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.